Coming up on Studios America, Faith Wire's Dan Andros joins us to preview the upcoming NBA season and more importantly, the BS that will come along with it. Washington State University cleans house on its football coaching staff because of their vaccine mandate. And how bad does a Democrat have to be to lose an election for governor in Virginia? Bad enough to still be arguing about the 2000 election. So let's do the left's big lie. Today, we have uh, the left's big lie. And, and with that, we've inserted a heaping spoon full of sarcasm. Because I hate the title, the, Le the big lie. Why do I hate it? I hate it because uh, this, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but like, this is the name that now Democrats want to cause, uh, uh, call the election of 2020 and all of the aftermath. And they like this. They say it all the time. CNN, it's like required by law for them to call every time they're talking about the election. They have to say uh, Donald Trump's big lie. Well, the big lie was uh, I don't know if anyone remembers this had a little bit of something to do with World War Two. We've been talking about that as it's associated to the Holocaust for a really long time. And to compare something like January 6th and the aftermath of the election to that is incredibly offensive. But I want to make sure everyone realizes that this is not talking about the election being stolen is not the purview solely of the right. This is not some new thing. And it ties in importantly to a race going on right now in Virginia. It's a big one a race for governor in Virginia. And people are looking at this as a, a bellwether race. Why? Well, this is the biggest race of 2021. And to get a sense of what's going to happen in 2022, it's a way of taking a temperature of, of the, the state of the electorate right now. If this race goes well for Republicans, if, if Youngkin, the, the uh, Terry McAuliffe's opponent, is able to win somehow or at least keep it very close, these are good. this is a really good sign for Republicans going into 22, terrible sign for Democrats. If, as expected, you know, Terry McAuliffe is able to win by 10 points, as he might normally do in a normal year in Virginia, um, well, that's going to tell a totally different story and maybe Republicans have to rethink where they are right now. So it's a big deal. And Terry McAuliffe has been around in politics for a long time with high, high aspirations. Back in 2000, he was the guy, uh, he was talking, he was on TV all the time. As we got toward 2004, he was the uh, Democratic chairman and his, he was really kind of seen as a rising star in the party and it, he'll see exactly where this is going. Mr. McAuliffe's star seems so bright that it has fueled speculation that when his term ends officially next March, he might run for office, possibly for governor of Ver uh, New York. Oh, New York, where he originally comes from or Virginia. Oh, 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 no, Florida is the other option. New York. Or Florida, where his father-in-law, Richard Swan, is a major Democratic fundraiser. Clearly relishing such talk, Mr. McAuliffe concedes an interest in executive office, but says he's leaving open his options. And he really did, didn't he? <laughs> he eventually did become governor of uh, Virginia. And he has had an interesting uh, path here in the state as he runs again to try to get the job back. Now, Governor Northam, who you may remember, um, and you might think, hey, why isn't he running again? Does he know of a bunch of new blackface photos that might come out? And no, that's not the reason. He's just limited. Um, but it's interesting to see why Terry McAuliffe was such a star back in 2000 and 2004. Why was he such a rising star? Very close friends with the Clintons. He was very much in that camp. But the uh, a native for John Kerry told the story better than I think anyone ever could. This is back from the New York Times in 2004. An advisor to Mr. Kerry said about Mr. McAuliffe's fundraising prowess and his willingness to be a lightning rod. Terry is a very valuable player. Terry will say anything. Yes, that is the defining characteristic of Terry McAuliffe. Terry will say anything. 
Whether it's true or not is not at all an important part of the story. Now, Terry um, has been talking about what you would call the left's big lie. I'm sure right now on CNN, they're doing that. They're saying, well, we know Donald Trump, he's got the big lie. Well, the left also has a big lie. Here's Terry McAuliffe in the biggest race going on right now. And he's been telling this big lie for years and years and years and years. Let's go back to the year 2000. I know it seems like long, long ago. Did Terry McAuliffe just accept the election results like you're supposed to, like we're told everybody does a, 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 a transition of power that's peaceful? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Here's Terry McAuliffe back in 2000. And you know this. If Katherine Harris, Jeb Bush, Jim Baker, and the Supreme Court hadn't tampered with the results, Al Gore would be president. George Bush would be back in Austin. We won that election because the country is with us, not with them. And Al Gore and Joe Lieberman got 547,000 more votes than George Bush did for President of the United States. Folks, you know it, I know it, they know it. We won that election. And let's never forget it. Terry is a very valuable player. Terry will say anything. And he always seems to do this. Now, of course, you remember the 2000 election. It was disputed, went up to the Supreme Court. It was a serious uh, situation, and there was actual disagreement, though a lot of it was just partisan and anger about losing for the Democrats. You know, it was a close race. It was 536 votes or whatever it was. So it was tight. But 2004 was something totally different. 2004 was an election that George W. Bush won relatively handily. Now, it did come down to one state, uh, but that state was not all that close. So what's odd about this is after the whole selected, not elected thing happened in 2000, and the Democrats would say this over and over again, despite every media recount by any rational standard showing that George W. Bush actually did win the election in 2000, they decided this worked pretty well for us last time. Let's try it again in 2004. And there were all sorts of bizarre and wild conspiracy theories about how digital voting machines that were put in after uh, the 2000 election were stealing votes. And we're, I mean, it, all of this is going to sound really familiar to what the big lie is uh, now with uh, people like, uh, you know, Rudy Giuliani and, 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 and all of that uh, stuff that happened in Georgia and these other states. So here is in 2004 now. This guy's supposed to be a credible figure. He's a rising star in the Democratic Party. Here's Terry McAuliffe talking about the election of 2004. Let's go back to Florida. We actually won the last presidential election, folks. They stole the last presidential election. So he's still holding on as we get to the election of 2004, still holding on to the election uh, issues in 2000. However, when we got to 2004 and George W. Bush wins, uh, the close state was uh, Ohio. He does not back down. In fact, he entertains every conspiracy theorist that is on his side of the argument because Terry will say anything. This is from a, uh, a, an op-ed in National Review. Here's reviewing kind of what McAuliffe did after the 2004 election. In 2004, did he tell the crazies in his party to move on? No. He commissioned a comprehensive investigative study on election practices in Ohio to address the legitimate questions and concerns that have been raised in Ohio, including anomalies in the reported results as compared with exit polls, historical data, and reported anomalies within counties and precincts and whether the touchscreen machines and tabulating systems systems function properly. Does any of this stuff sound, sound familiar? This is all the stuff the media has been beating up on Trump supporters for, uh, for the past six months to a year. He went on. We owe it to the voters, McAuliffe said, in December of 2004 to understand what happened and conduct a thorough investigation into various election administration issues that arose in the state of Ohio in the 2004 election. To that end, 
He pledged to hire a political science, scientist expert in quantitative analysis, an expert or experts in the design of computer hardware and software systems, an expert in voting systems and machines, an investigator with forensic expertise, and a pollster to survey voters who cast provisional ballots and to conduct other original survey research as needed. All this to investigate a state George W. Bush carried by more than 118,000 votes. This is essentially what the left has been beating up uh, Arizona for. They went through, they wanted to go through an extensive audit. And might I remind you, 118,000 votes is a lot of votes. Now, if you want to go back and look at these elections, in 2004, one state, Ohio, if it, the margin there was 118,000 votes, and that would have flipped the election. But again, that was Terry McAuliffe. He was out there saying all sorts of things about what happened in that election and how we had to look into it and maybe there was fraud and we needed an analysis and all these things. But that election was much, much of a, a much larger defeat for Democrats than the elections we're talking about more recently. In fact, you go back to the 2016 election, which Democrats also said was stolen from them because of Russia. That was only 78,000 votes. 40,000 less or fewer votes uh, among three states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And the election that CNN and everybody has been going crazy about here in 2020 was even closer than that. Only 43,000 votes, if flipped in Georgia, Wisconsin, and Arizona, would have turned the tides of that election. So we have an election that's not even close by, by historical standards. And yet, Terry McAuliffe, as the head of the DNC, goes through with this ridiculous charade of an investigation to try to appease the crazies in his own party. Uh, the report was called Democracy at Risk, the 2004 election in Ohio. And you tell me if any of this stuff sounds familiar from the, uh, from the uh, news reporting from MSNBC, what they've been complaining about uh, recently. The report found Current touchscreen voting systems, in addition to being extremely expensive to procure and maintain, are vulnerable to fraud. While there is no evidence, reliable evidence of actual fraud in the use of these machines in Ohio in 2004, our expert advises that these touchscreen machines are not sufficiently safeguarded against fraud. The statistical study of precinct level data does not suggest the occurrence of widespread fraud that systematically misallocated votes from Kerry to Bush. Now, what's interesting about this is this is very similar to what we got out of Arizona and the audit, which was they said, look, we're scared about all these problems, but we didn't actually find fraud when we looked into it. That would reverse the election results. I don't remember anybody beating up on Terry McAuliffe for this, and no one seems to be bringing it up now. This guy has been an election truther for 20 years, and nobody's saying anything. It's entirely possible that touchscreen voting, uh, a touchscreen voter could vote for one candidate, which would be displayed on the screen, while an entirely different candidate could be recorded internally as having received that vote. If such an error occurred, neither the voter nor any election official would be able to undo the damage after the fact. If such an error uh, occurred systematically, it could swing the outcome of an election. And if the faulty software was deliberately placed in the machine, it could even be programmed to modify itself to eliminate any traces of its ever being present. If such fraud were occurring, it would not be visible to poll workers or election observers, end quote. This is the Terry McAuliffe Democratic Party who's producing this report. This isn't something recent. This isn't some, uh, you know, some crazy thing from one of Trump's wild eyed attorneys. This is going back to uh, 2000 and 2004 in particularly, where this is this was not even a question. This was just nonstop conspiracy stuff with a margin three times as large as what we saw in the 2020 election, in which every mainstream media uh, figure seemed to call it the, the worst thing that's ever happened to American society. Uh, however, you'd think, okay, well, with the passage of time, perhaps Terry McAuliffe has understood that what he was doing was uh, uh, destabilizing democracy, and he has now come to his senses. Here he is, very recently, being asked about all the election fraud he's alleged before. Was President George Bush legitimately elected? Well, we went through a very contentious 2000, if you remember, 
And I remind you, it went all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Right. And it took them through the second week of December to actually make a decision. And the Supreme Court, for the first time in the history of our country, stopped the counting of ballots in Florida and overturned the local Virginia or the uh, Florida Supreme Court. So yes or no? So that was a different. Yep, yeah, he got sworn in. Once you're sworn in, we got to move on. But do not forget that it was very important that the Supreme Court of Florida stopped the counting of ballots. Okay. That wasn't the case in uh, 2020. Hmm. Hmm. Fascinating. Really fascinating. Um, also, Terry McAuliffe was doing a lot of the same stuff throughout these elections. And is still, this is some of these quotes are very recent from 2019. Listen to Terry McAuliffe on voter fraud. Glenn Youngkin has run the entire campaign on election integrity. He says it is the single most important issue facing Virginia. No. Do you think this next election is going to be on the up and up? Oh, I'm very concerned. Russia is going to be as active as they've ever been. I remember I kept voting in the Senate race, kept voting for the Democrat. Republican name kept coming up. Three times that happened. So I took the machines and I hired hackers, professional hackers, to come into Virginia. Listen to this. It took them six minutes to hack into our OptiScan machines. And within four minutes, they were able to change a vote. Glenn Youngkin has run the entire campaign on election integrity. He says it is the single most important issue facing Virginia. No. This is leading up to the 2020 election where he's saying, look, we think it's going to be hacked and we were worried about Russia and all of the things. He's using the same bag of tricks. Is there any doubt in your mind that if they had lost this election by 43,000 votes, they would be doing the exact same thing they're accusing Trump of doing now? Is there any doubt in your mind whatsoever? One of the most revealing parts of of all of these clips we went through was a part of uh, one interview where he was asked about his role in the 2000 election denial. And he said, well, look, I was, you know, I was the the head of the Democratic Party. In other words, it was his job and he would he had to do what he had to do. But that's what's revealing about this guy. Terry is a very valuable asset. Terry will say anything. And that's how he's been utilized this entire time. You can't believe a word the man says. Terry will say anything and has said anything for 20 years in public view. Look, we don't know how this election is going to turn out. And, you know, there are a lot of foundational advantages that Terry McAuliffe has. He's very well known in the state. That one actually might be a disadvantage because people know him. But uh, he's very well known in the state. He has all of that infrastructure, the Clinton sort of infrastructure behind him. And, you know, look, it's a blue state. This is not uh, this is not a purple state anymore. Virginia largely is, you know, a blue state. It's not it's not one that that is all that close, though there have been some close uh, elections for governor. But this is an important race. And if the Republicans can keep this close or maybe pull it off, it is a massive sign. This is something that might be able to stop some of these huge bills that are going through Congress, because some of these purple state people uh, who are running for re-election are going to start freaking out if Terry McAuliffe loses this race. It's a huge one. And Terry McAuliffe has no credibility. And you know what else? Terry will say anything. Yeah, your government sucks. Yeah, they're doing all sorts of terrible things. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? That's what our leaders are saying when they raise your taxes and destroy the value of your money with inflation. Where are you going to go? You can't go anywhere. Well, one thing you might want to check out is going to Panama. Now, a lot of American retirees and veterans are going down there because you can live in luxury on like 24 grand a year. You can pay 0% income tax. Uh, your health care could be as little as $2,600 a year. And you can own like luxury beachfront condos on pristine white sand, beautiful areas, for less than 120 grand. Now, you probably have heard of Panama. It's one of the, uh, I mean, I know you've heard of the country, but uh, you may have heard of it as a big time wealth protection haven. A lot of people, people who know a lot more than me, people who are smart, uh, do things like this because they want to make sure that they get the best, their money goes as far as, as it can, and it's protected. And you see the insanity that is going on here right now. This is an interesting thing to look into to see where, where your future lies. 
Uh, right now, you can get uh, The American's Guide to Living and Retiring in Panama from International Living. It's 100% free uh, for you. Just head over to buypanamanow.com slash stew. Buypanamanow.com slash stew. Get your copy. Check it out. Understand what the options and possibilities are here. Buypanamanow.com slash stew. You can sign up now. Get your free series on investing in Panama's Pacific Riviera today. Buypanamanow.com slash stew. Happy to welcome Dan Andros back to the program. He's the managing editor of faithwire.com. Be sure to check out their website and their YouTube channel. Dan, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, you. Know, we just talked about Terry McAuliffe and uh, what a disaster he is. Uh, you are working with CBN on some extra coverage on this race. I mean, this is one I think is just starting to get people's attention uh, nationwide. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, on uh, November 2nd, on, on that election night, we will be doing special live coverage on the CBN News YouTube channel just for that reason, Stu. I, I do think uh, and we think that this is potentially a race that has is a harbinger of things to come and uh, potentially for the GOP and for Democrats uh, and the midterms and beyond. Um, so we're, we're watching this one uh, closely to see what happens. Yeah, you know, I, I, Terry McAuliffe's a known figure in uh, Virginia, which probably works against him, because if you know Terry <laughs> McAuliffe, you probably don't like him. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting because I don't know that Youngkin needs to win this race. But if he if this is a very close race in a state that is pretty much blue at this point, this is a bad sign for Democrats for 2022. Yeah, so the bar is, you know, fairly low on that. It's not like he's got to win. You're exactly right. If he just makes this a race, that that will uh, sufficiently scare Democrats going forward. Yeah, it really is. a It's it's a it's an interesting one to watch. We're going to be talking a lot more about it as we get closer. I want to uh, transition, though. Tonight, uh, NBA starts its season. It, you know, it's going to be an it's going to be an interesting one. They've, they're up to something like 96 percent vaccination rates here in the NBA, which is pretty spectacular if you want those rates to be high. I mean, you know, yeah. these are guys that are obviously not particularly vulnerable to covid. They're young. They're in shape. They're the last people in the world that have to worry about this outside of maybe our children. Uh, yet yeah. they they've harangued them into getting this to 96 percent without a mandate, by the way. They've just basically told the players you're going your lives are going to be miserable if you don't do this yeah well well some of the players did have you know be, if you're in california or if you're in uh new york there there was i know andrew wiggins was facing potential fines you know and and kyrie irving as well for the home games there um so maybe he could have potentially played in a different state but um but uh, wiggins eventually caved and just said ah you know i gotta get the vaccine and uh, Kyrie Irving, though, is taking is, ta is still appears to be um, threatening not to play. And the interesting thing in all of this, Stu, especially from a Stu Bergier angle, <laughs> is LeBron James actually kind of came out and supported those who were commenting on uh, Wiggins and I think Draymond Green about the vaccine mandate. So obviously you must have dedicated several shows to praising LeBron James, right? <laughs> um, you know, we those shows, we had them planned. And then lots of things came up. Just things came up. Something came we, up, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Got, it's gotcha. Inter it is interesting that the, I will say that the the players generally have taken sort of a libertarian approach to this, and that they've well, said, the you know, go ahead, you guys, you guys do what you want. I, we don't care if our you know star players don't show up because they won't get the vaccine. I gotta give the NBA some credit. Kind of, maybe they're not thinking it out this far. I don't know, but um, we often rip people for being inconsistent. But if you are the NBA and you've been championing Black Lives Matter and systemic racism uh, to then turn around and say, hey, the government's telling us to take this uh, vaccine, guys, <laughs> uh, this systemically racist government's telling us to take the vaccine. If you just blindly took it, I mean, wouldn't you be going against what you were just saying before that everything this country does is racist? Like if you are happen to be African-American, wouldn't you be a little leery of the government telling you to just, come on, just don't think about it, just inject this thing? Um, now, I don't think that. I'm just saying, if you had yeah. that view of America, wouldn't you be, maybe they're just being consistent here, I guess is all I'm saying. This is uh, an incredible segue to a clip that I pulled today. This is from the Washington Post doing a coverage on the Kyrie Irving situation. And it, it reminded me of 
going back to last year and the transition that has happened politically with people and Kyrie Irving. Listen to this. This situation has made for some really strange bedfellows. If you rewind to sort of the the big Black Lives Matter push of the summer of 2020, Kyrie Irving was sort of out front um, of that, you know, advocating for the players to not even participate in the NBA bubble uh, because uh, he wanted to be in the streets really to protest and, uh, you know, to lead that way and to send a message almost to corporate America that, uh, you know, black players couldn't be sent to uh, Florida to, to go forward with this plan. And yet, you know, now he's in a situation where two of his biggest public advocates for his decision not to get the vaccine are Senator Ted Cruz and Donald Trump Jr. I mean, that's a situation that I can't imagine very many uh, NBA followers or political followers would have ever anticipated. (laughs) The news is so crazy. We forget. We don't even notice when these things happen. This is the guy who's the biggest BLM guy in the world. And now all of a sudden it's Ted Cruz and Donald Trump and Kyrie Irving. They're a team. Yeah. Yeah. Completely wild. But uh, um, I really expect nothing. I mean, look, the news cycles move so fast. I mean, we've we've already moved on from Afghanistan. Yeah. Right. Like, did did that even happen? Did we even lose Afghanistan back to the Taliban? Was that is that even a thing anymore? I mean, it's everyone's just kind of like, all right, let's uh, let's talk about a trillion dollar coin. What else we got coming up next? It it feels like it was 100 years ago. So let me go. Let me focus on this Kyrie thing here for a second, though. Yeah. Yeah. Do you take this as a positive or a negative? The positive view being, look, people like Ted Cruz and Donald Trump Jr., who were very critical of BLM back when that was going on, are willing to align with him when their views come together. It's two people from the other side of the aisle coming together. Or is this just one of these things? I, I, I find it difficult to not just see it as incredibly cynical and meaningless, these battles that we have all the time. I mean, you know, we switch back and forth on these guys like Kanye West is the dumbest guy in the world. And then he wears a red hat and he's the smartest guy in the world. Like right. these things just change like crazy. Nicki Minaj, she's a she's a buffoon. And now she said something about the vaccine and we're supposed to love her. Like I can't even keep track of this stuff anymore. Yeah, I, I think you got to take it on a case by case basis and who is maybe you're just going to have to use your best uh, shame, you know, detector. Who's the most <laughs> shameless and is just willing to just say whatever um, and then judge it by that? Because I personally know my, I actually like to see I'd rather see somebody at least kind of try to stay and, and be able to agree with someone who they normally disagree with. I Normally, I don't mind that. I think that's actually a good thing. But I think most of the time it happens now just out of convenience and they just don't really care. And uh, it's just all a game and pawns and everything else. They'll be out ripping them the next minute for how ridiculous they are, you know. Um, So, yeah, that's probably where it gets too far is when you then. You should always be rating the thing they're saying, right, not the person. And what happens is we're like, oh, I love Kanye. He's talking about Jesus now. He's great. And then he comes out and does something crazy. And you're like, this guy's an idiot. Well, just agree with the thing he's saying or disagree with the thing he's saying. Can we just do that? Let's just like ditch the ad hominems or the excessive praise of somebody when let's just judge the things they're saying. You, you're, are you thought. advocating for judging people on the content of their character and maybe the merit uh, of their actions? Well, is that racist now or not? It is. I don't know. It is, it is entirely okay. racist. No, no, I'm not doing that. Mark. <laughs> I want to get to one more thing here. listening. <laughs> Before we leave, uh, in this one, we crossed the border into Canada, which I think we're now allowed to do again, which is interesting. Um, in Canada, there is a case going on. Rebel News is covering it uh, with a guy, a pastor, Pastor Artur. And he is he has had all sorts of problems with the government. He wants to say he wants to speak his mind about uh, he doesn't like the vaccines. He doesn't like some of the mask restrictions that are going on up there. And the, the court has come to him and not only find him and put him in prison, uh, but now has told him that whenever he speaks out about the COVID situation, he needs to read a script written for him by the judge. Let me give you this real quick. It's incredible this is going on. Quote, <laughs> I am also aware that the, this is what he has to say. 
I am also aware that the views I'm expressing to you on this occasion may not be views held by the majority of medical experts in Alberta. While I may disagree with them, I am obliged to inform you that the majority of medical experts favor social distancing, mask wearing, and avoiding large crowds to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Most medical experts also support participation in a vaccination program unless a valid religious or medical reason you cannot be vaccinated. Vaccinations have been shown to statistically save lives and to reduce the severity of COVID-19 symptoms. Now, look, you can agree or disagree with that spiel or whatever his spiel is. But I mean, this is just forced speech on a religious figure. I mean, this is insanity. And I'm worried that that sort of stuff is going to cross the border very soon. Yeah. Well, I mean, as we know, Stu, North Korea is obviously a tough spot. I mean, it's <laughs> it, it, or wait, that's Canada. That's actually Canada that's <laughs> happening in. I mean, imagine having to say, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, that's so ridiculous. You know what it reminds me of, except for the one in the bit is more justified, but the Mr. Show bit, rapist coming through with the convicted <laughs> rapist who's out in public now, and he's got to shout that he's he's got somebody next to him. He's shouting that he's a rapist. <laughs> and uh, but at least, I mean, that's a crime that you'd at least justify. Now it's just like, hey, we need to have somebody shouting these opposing views, whatever you say something. Imagine saying that every time you said something about vaccines, and you're just like, Hang on a second, guys. Yeah. You, you get it out. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Yeah. I, I don't understand what people are thinking. It's, it's so central to the American experience that compelled speech is not something yeah. that is allowed. I mean, we saw this in a, yeah. in a recent case with, in, I think it was California, where um, they wanted they wanted to force, um, uh, you know, um, uh, anti-abortion clinics to put up a poster basically saying, hey, by the way, don't let these people talk you out of it. You can go get an yeah. abortion if you want. And that was overruled correctly by the Supreme Court. This, it, we, sometimes I forget that we are pretty much the only ones around who have a First Amendment that protects religious liberty. And man, we better protect it because there's nowhere else. There's nowhere else to go. No. And uh, that pastor, by the way, he's the same one that was shouting at the health inspectors, get out, you Nazis, get out, you Nazis, because <laughs> yeah. he's from Poland. And uh, they're making him look more and more accurate by the minute. Yeah, you can go back in history and watch what they forced people to do, particularly people of faith uh, back in those times. It's scary. And look, Canada's not there yet. But wow, this is really stunning stuff. You can read the entire document. I think it's a uh, I think it's called firethejudge.com is where you can go. But you can actually see the text of the document and the punishment that they're handing down to people of faith. Uh, it's just a bizarre situation. Dan Andros, managing editor of Faithwire, also working with CBN on live coverage of the Virginia elections coming up on November 2nd. Dan, thanks so much for coming on. All right. Thanks for having me. I got a bowl. Built Bar is here for you. It's saving the day. Built Bar is, of course, the snack that we talk about all the time. And I don't know. I mean, you could call it a snack. You could call it a meal replacement if you're uh, trying to eat healthy. You could also just call it like dessert. My wife eats these things for dessert. That's how good they are. Uh, coconut, uh, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, cookies and cream. They have, I think, nine flavors all the time where you can get this mixed box and they'll give you the, uh, the sampling of two of each of their flavors. And they have new stuff they're introducing constantly because they're innovative. They like uh, trying new stuff. And this is why they've had so much success because they know how to make something taste good and have 180 calories or less, 18 grams of protein, you know, low sugar, low carbs. It's, it's just a fantastic product. You're going to love it. Built.com is the place to go to get these things. Built.com. Now, when you're there, what do you need to do? You need to say, uh, where's that promo code box? There it is, Stu15. STU15, Stu15. You get 15% off of your first order. Use the promo code Stu15 because that's how they know you like this stupid show. Plus, you get 15% off at built.com. It's built.com. Now, you might know Pat Gray, uh, of course, a host of Pat Gray Unleashed here on Blaze TV. And, um, and you might know him as a guy who would oppose vaccine mandates. Um, however, you should also know that the Washington state head coach has been fired for uh, violating the vaccine uh, mandate. And in addition to that, their next game is against BYU. So I think this particular <laughs> Vaccine mandate, Pat Gray is completely fine with. Um, Washington State, uh, Nick Rolovich, uh, he, he, he had been saying for a while he was not vaccinated. He wasn't hiding that. Um, he did try to get a religious exemption. 
uh, from the state of Washington. Uh, and that was ref seemingly refused. We don't know for sure uh, it, whether it was refused or they just didn't answer. But today or yesterday was the deadline uh, where he had to be vaccinated. He did not get vaccinated and he got fired. He was the state's highest paid employee. Jay Inslee is the governor there, and, he, and it comes again from the governor. And this is the same thing we talked about with uh, Dan Andrus a little while ago. Um, uh, this isn't necessarily an NBA issue or um, a New Jersey or I guess New Brooklyn Nets issue. Uh, this is a government issue. I mean, the city of New York is saying Kyrie Irving can't play inside the arena. The state of Washington is saying this guy can't coach. And so he's out uh, now as head coach. In fact, it was I think it was five total coaches they fired, um, and he had uh, he will be getting a three point six million dollar buyout of his contract. But they're saying because he violated the mandate, he may not get that cash. I'm sure there will be lawsuits. Lawyers will be heard from in this particular one. But a bizarre I, look. This is a bizarre situation. The NBA has ninety some odd percent of their players vaccinated. There's no reason to freak out about one player who decides, you know, it's really important to them not to do it. Again, I, you know, you got to make your own decisions in life. You know, the government's not supposed to be your dad. The government's not supposed to be your doctor. You're supposed to be able to make decisions on, uh, on your own for your own body. And it's like, I, it really is amazing that we are told uh, that, uh, you know, the government is eternally and structurally racist, and yet all these NBA players, eh, just listen to the government, take your vaccine. I mean, uh, look, I, I've got no problem with the vaccines, but I do think it's a very strange way uh, to, to, to do, you're, you're kind of doing life wrong if you're firing a coach uh, about that, or if you're throwing an NBA player uh, off a team for that. Uh, Novak Djokovic is also, uh, you know, one of the best tennis players of all time, probably will end his career with the most Grand Slam tournaments of any uh, male tennis player in history. However, he's not going to get one, it looks like, at the Australian Open this year because he is saying he is going to, um, he is, well, he's saying it's a private uh, decision whether he's going to get vaccinated or not, or whether he has been vaccinated. Now, we can translate this. This has been the case every single time someone has said it's a private decision. People who are vaccinated want to tell you about it all the time. That's why we did the vaccinate, um, the, uh, the parody uh, T-shirt of, uh, of, of, uh, of all these you know, left people who were showing off their, their ugly arms uh, for their vaccine selfies. You can see that, by the way, at YouTube. It's, it's funny. I think you'll like it. Um, but uh, this, when you come out and you say, look, I don't know. I mean, I, it's a private decision. Uh, don't, uh, don't ask me any more about it. That usually means you're not vaccinated. You don't want to deal with all the hassles from the media. And there's no real way to get around it. Look, there was one player in the NHL who just turned in a fake vaccine card and got caught. This is just, why are we pushing people into these areas? Let people make decisions for themselves. And if there's any sport in which there's absolutely no reason to have a vaccine mandate, it's tennis. You're standing outdoors in most cases, all the way across a tennis court from everyone. How are you gonna pass COVID to somebody? You could be, you could be in the middle of the, you could be in the middle of like the, of Donald Trump as his worst stumble out from Walter Reed right onto the tennis court and still not give anybody COVID. It's just insanity. So, but this is where we are in this country and it's probably gonna get worse before it gets better. Prepare yourself. Are you trying, did you, did you take some like Bitcoin profits and now you're going to buy like a mega mansion, 750,000 square feet, you know, just, just a little nice place for you to vacation in. Well, if you need a real estate agent who's going to come in and take charge of the situation, make sure that if you're buying a new home, you get one that is, you're going to get the best price for that home, even if the price is like hundreds of millions of dollars that you're paying directly in Ethereum. No matter what it is, you need to find the best real estate agent uh, for a big transaction like that. I mean, if you're just selling a house, maybe you're, you know, this is a situation that a lot of people are in where maybe they live in a home that their parents owned and handed down to them that's been paid off and they're deciding it's time to move. And you got a lot of cash on the line there. You got to make sure you nail this thing, this, nail this transaction, and you got to have the best real estate agent in your area. You can do that at realestateagentsitrust.com. Find the best person for you and your situation at realestateagentsitrust.com. Check it out now, realestateagentsitrust.com.
You can watch this show. You can listen to this show. Whatever you want to do. If you're listening on podcasts, make sure to rate us and review us. We would definitely appreciate that. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. This one says, Studios America, informative, fun, honest. All the things that I am not as a person, this show is. And we appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for reviewing the show. Remember, when you give us a good review, it hurts other podcasts. You're doing something nice for us and something bad for others, and that's the most important thing. Also, you can comment on YouTube or Facebook whenever you want uh, when the show is going on. This one comes in about Colin Powell yesterday. I really liked Powell until he came out against McCain. Even though I think McCain would not have been great, Obama is really the only person that set this train wreck in motion. With that said, he willingly fought for this country and continued to serve us politically. Politics aside, he was a person with loved ones, and I am sorry for their loss. You don't need to agree with or even like someone to say that we celebrate their life and pray for those left behind. RIP General Powell. You know, see, uh, there's actually good people out there. I forget them because, you know, I mean, everyone I deal with around here, they're all just terrible. I mean, all the people like, uh, in the control room, behind the cameras, I mean, these are just ter the worst among us. And that's who I see every day. I forget that there are good people out there. And it's nice. It's nice to see. Uh, thank you so much for that. And, uh, you know, it's true. I mean, like, look, it, I, you know, as we said yesterday, look, I, there's a lot I had big problems with, with Colin Powell's politics. I mean, I disagree with him on a lot of different things. However, like, you know, for everyone trying to use this for their COVID point of the day or trying to trash him because he did something you didn't like with Iraq back in 2003, whatever the, the situation is, uh, you mourn a guy when he when he passes away and um, you know, certainly feel bad for the family. If you're out there bashing a guy on the day he died, you know, look, you're doing life wrong. And we talked about this yesterday. We need a T-shirt that looks like this. And they are so fast. The, the, the people in the merch department are good people, not like the people behind the camera and in the control room. But I'm saying like the, the merch people are good people. They came up with this. And look at it, here it is. You're doing life wrong. T-shirt line now available at stewdoesmerch.com. Stewdoesmerch.com. There's stickers and there's Christmas cards. I think the best thing to do is send a Christmas card to first someone who just says you're doing, you're doing life wrong. I don't know if I, how I would feel about receiving that, but it would be a lot of fun to send that, that I do know. Okay, the most important story of the day. Uh, we have to get to this before we take a break. Tomorrow is the day. Think about this. Today, crappy day. Tomorrow, great day. Why? Tomorrow, when you get up, get in your car. Don't drive to work. Don't drive your kids to school. Drive to Taco Bell, because tomorrow Taco Bell is giving away free breakfast burritos. Yes, it's happening tomorrow. Free breakfast burritos at every U.S. restaurant. It runs from 7 to 11 a.m. Uh, make sure you go get one of these things. Jam it down your gullet. You're going to feel great about yourself for at least... 30 to 40 seconds, and then it's all going to turn terrible. But that 30, 40, 30 to 40 seconds is going to be glorious, and you're going to thank me for it. And then you're going to curse my name. Back in a second. Okay. So here's what happened. A woman has a tattoo of Ben-Hur on her butt. That is the least strange thing about the story I'm about to tell you. That's where we are. So she's getting this tattoo of Ben-Hur that a woman randomly has on her butt, touched up by a tattoo artist. Uh, apparently, we don't pay tattoo artists enough for what they're going through. I, did, I had no, no idea. So he's touching up the tattoo, and while he's doing that, he's smoking, which is an interesting idea to, to I mean, do you know where this is going already? As he's, tattoo as he's working on the tattoo on her butt and smoking, she farts. This not only lights her thong on fire, but also his beard on fire. <laughs> Unbelievable. Here's what he says. Next thing I see is I sense a slight ripple on the buttock cleavage area just around Charleston Heston's whip and a hissing sound, more of a whoosh than a rasp. And before I know what's happening, there's a flame shooting from her arse to my cigarette and my beard's gone up like an Aussie bush fire. I don't even know what else to say, other than it sounds like a more exciting scene than anything in the 2016 Ben-Hur remake. That, that we do know. <laughs> 